This is Wandering Universe. Today, I'll be exploring further south from Egypt into the desert lands of Sudan to see pyramids. So, hop in the four-wheel drive, fasten your seatbelt, because we're about to go for a fun ride. Are you ready? Let's go exploring. This map, we're going from Egypt, Memphis, Cairo, and Sasakwa all the way down, driving all the way down to this southern border area right here, next to the Nile River. So we're following the actual line of the river itself to do some very interesting exploring. And this is a close-up shot of the very areas itself snaking along the Nile River to the spots where we're going to be exploring some very interesting monuments today. So, fasten that seatbelt and hold on to the Oh Crikey Bar because this is going to be quite a bumpy journey, but I am guarantee you it will be an adventurous one. So, let's go exploring. Since the first discovery of the Giza pyramids two centuries ago, more and more pyramids have been cropping up in more places than you can imagine. Memphis was the starting point. I have mentioned in the last video that there were other pyramids such as Pepe's Pyramid Complex in South Saquara in which they are almost next door neighbours to the Giza pyramids. These pyramids, from what I've learnt, act like satellite pyramids, as you can see right here. I'll show you what I mean. Compare these pyramids with satellite dishes, as you can see in this photograph in front of you. I'm sure you've seen one of these in many places around the world, so you may have come across one of them in your lifetime. These smaller pyramids I've explored were made to act like satellite dishes for the Giza pyramids, but look, I'll talk about that later down the road. In the meantime, I'll be exploring these pyramids situated just over the border from Egypt. These pyramids are not stamped on the world map as something wonderfully glamorous as they are the smaller versions, but they the detail construction of these pyramids are just as great as the ones in Memphis, Egypt, not Memphis, Tennessee. Yes, I'm sure you all know who this great big hunk of spunk is. Needn't I spell it out. Many of these pyramids are placed smack bang next to the Nile River. Why is that? I won't say it now, but... I do know the actual reason behind the construction. Many of these structures snake along the river like Abu Simel, Kwasa Ibram, Sema, Sayi, Setenga, Kerma, Kawa, Jebel Bakal, El Karu, Nuri, Napta, and Muro. All were built right near the banks of the Nile. All the Prussian education style textbooks will contain guest theories told by the you-know-who, academics, historians and archaeologists that all these structures were created by the Kushite Kingdom situated near the River Nile. The Nubian Empire expanded their power thanks to, yes, by this hunky bloke, King Pai from Lower to Upper Egypt and took vast control of their entire country. And due to this spectacular conquest, these conventional coneheads labelled them as the actual builders of the Nubian pyramids. The timeline of the Nubian Empire was quite short-lived actually from 770 to 656 BC. The kingdom was divided in three parcels, Kerma 2500 to 1500 BC, Napta 1000 to 300 BC, and Moreau was actually 300 BC to 300 AD, believe it or not. All the pyramids are made of granite and sandstone. The design, style, and structure, as you can see right here, does resemble that of the Giza pyramids. There are more pyramids in this area than in Egypt alone. Before King Pai took over the joint, his father, King Kashtar, 1075 to 715 BC, developed 
some sort of diplomatic foreign relations by negotiating trade deals and keeping friendly terms. So the Kushite kingdom adopted Egyptian culture as their own national identity. These pyramids were built 1,000 years after Egyptian burial methods changed. Hmm, I question that. They served as burial tombs for the, get this, the private elite royal family of Nubia. Napta and Moreau were the main ones for the wealthy elite. So that would suggest there was class division even amongst the filthy rich. It's not like they really got along like a house on fire. There are nine pyramids in Jebel Bakal and 40 pyramids near and further out from Moreau. In 2009 and 2012 more, pyramid-style footings were discovered near Sedenga. Now, this story gets a little funky, okay? So just bear with me. There are holes in its construction history, so I'm not going to argue any further with that. The story goes that King Kashta and King Pai were buried in the El Karu pyramids. This photograph is just an example of one of the pyramids they may have been buried in them. It's no guarantee that there was a body found in there, but I'll get into that in a moment. But this is just demonstrates that this is a type of pyramid that they would have buried them to prepare them for the afterlife. Now, these are the kings that were buried in such pyramids as this one. Shabaka, Shaptaka, and Tamwat Tamani were also buried there. A further 14 pyramids were built as tombs for their warrior queens. The Naptan pyramids, as you can see in this photograph, are in Nauru, which is about 10 kilometers north of the opposite bank of the Nile. They're also very close in proximity in, well, actually to Moreau, believe it or not. Moreau is a necropolis burial ground for 21 kings, and 52 queens and princes. This photograph is just showing you the reconstructed pyramids. As you can see in the background, I'll get into that in a minute, what happened to those pyramids in the background. But as you can see in the foreground, this is just a reconstructed version of how the pyramids would have looked thousands of years earlier. And as you can see, there's a lot of very smooth white, well, not necessarily white, but more sandstone yellow cladding covered on the outside to cover the brickwork of these stylized pyramids. And as you can see, there's like a front entrance there that enters beneath the pyramid into deep down into the chambers, so-called burial chambers, but I'm going to dispute that later on in another video. But for now, just have a look at how they were back then. And may I say, if how they looked back then is how they imagined to be today, it, that would suggest to me that this type of construction, once again, I will keep repeating this, that it was high quality, professionally done by professionals who were highly experienced in this type of construction engineering. This is something we couldn't even attempt if we had tried with primitive tools. This was done by very advanced technology that goes beyond and surpasses our current construction techniques. So just compare that to the ones behind it and also to the Giza pyramids and you'll know what I'm talking about. The oldest and largest pyramid at Nauru is King Tahakwa. Go figure. And the cherry on top of the Sunday is that all bodies were placed in a granite sarcophagi. Now this photo is just an example of what I'm telling you, that presumably they may have found a couple of centuries back this type of granite sarcophagus buried underneath the smaller pyramid. We don't know, there is no evidence to support it. We don't know if they really have even found one granite sarcophagus buried there. But I'll get into that in a moment, what ma the aftermath of these pyramids, what had happened to them. But something like 
this one okay so just imagine but possibly came in a variety of colors okay not just pink we're talking about black brown gray white and so forth but what's most perplexing is that they have not found one sarcophagus inside any of these pyramids except for Pepe the first pyramid complex and this is just an a photo, an actual photograph of the burial chamber of Pepe the First Pyramid. And as you can see, I've mentioned this in the previous video, that the sarcophagus is blue granite. Blue granite doesn't come from Egypt or Sudan. Blue granite comes from two countries in the world, Namibia and Central Brazil. Now you must be thinking in the back of your mind, how on earth did they manage to transport blue granite from either Central Brazil or Namibia thousands upon thousands of years ago. Well, I can tell you this, they didn't do it by sleds. That's garbage, okay? They did it by technology that is compared to modern cargo ships that you see today that are out in the waters at the moment, or it was something like a spaceship style cargo ship that you may resemble ones that you see in Star Trek, and that they would have transported the heavy granite from those two countries and then carefully placed it beneath the pyramid chamber so it's quite remarkable to see a very rare find in egypt as i investigated further something odd just flashed in front of me okay all their bodies are still missing where are they until now there is no further evidence to crack the case wide open so it's still a cold case. Their bodies are still unaccounted for. But there could be a reason for this. Most of these pyramids were plundered during ancient times. This is just one photograph. Be prepared. It's going to be a sad sack case. Wouldn't that suggest that ancient Egypt was undergoing a very long economic depression? under the rule of feudalism you know the ultra rich live like gods in the universe whilst the peasant poor like us get the scraps as a poor version of a sunday roast hmm so much for the golden age of egypt and no they were not built using this are you kidding me nope i'm not going to rent on about it today save that for later however the next story gets much worse. Thousands of years later, an explorer by the name of Frederick Colliard found the pyramids, believe it or not, in good condition. And here is an illustration how he saw them coming up. And yes, this is how he pictured it. Marvellous and in excellent condition. Whilst he stood there admiring the beauty of these undisturbed structures during a tranquil sunset moment, along came a man by the name of Fellini. No, I'm not referring to the Fellini film La Dolce Vita, starring the blonde bombshell and directed by Federico Fellini. No, I'm talking about this Fellini. Giuseppe Fellini in the 1830s. He thought he was Captain Blood in a past life and reenacted it for fun, make believing he was the hot shit swashbuckling pirate that spiced up his humdrum world. So, what did he do? Upon hearing the Italian rumor mill, someone whispered hidden treasure buried in these pyramids in his ear. He knew this was his big break to get rich quick. He packed up his gear, got in his, into his get-up, and went all the way to Sudan to the undisturbed pyramids in Moreau and did the unthinkable. This, yes, this photograph represents a very sad case, hunting for lost treasure. Ugh. Fellini was mad for gold. He had the fever for it. And all he had to do was be the big moron. He had to come in and ruin a good thing. Not just one or two pyramids. It was all 40 of them. Yes, he lopped off the tops of these pyramids, tree felling style, climbed down and trashed the inner chambers in search of gold. But wait, 
there's more. A well-known Harvard archaeologist by the name of George Reznor examined the pyramids at Nauru and mapped more than 80 Kushite burials in 1916 to 1919. When he arrived at Moreau, he was mortified at the sight of the destruction. Like Fellini, he came down on these structures like a nuclear bomb. After he heard about Fellini, this Italian desperate treasure hunter, he must have thought in the back of his mind, what kind of greedy and deranged lunatic would do such a thing? Then he figured, ah, Fellini, the desperado get-rich-quick schema artist, would do anything for a quick buck at someone else's expense. Ugh, makes you want to cry. Anyhow, on the positive side, archaeologists in the 19th and 20th centuries found lots of artefacts like bows, quivers of arrows, thumb rings, wooden boxes, furniture, pottery, and so on. They also found numerous wall reliefs like this one that detailed the royals were mummified, covered with jewellery, and rested in wooden mummy cases. But no actual bodies were found. Nothing. But the only artifact that comes close to a dead body is this. Frederic Colliard collected a few bizarre thingamajigs like this ghastly artifact back to his home. If anyone can translate it from French to English, please put it in the comment section. If any, what I'm talking about is that little label that's stuck to the bottom edge of the hand right there. If anyone can read it, properly and get it translated, please do so. I'd like to know what it's actually said. If this is a true find from Moreau, he must have known there were bodies buried there. If so, this illustration hand-drawn by George Reisner in 1923 debunks the theory that the royals were mummified and entombed in a wooden case. Then why does this drawing speak contradiction? They don't look mummified and encased bodies in preparation for the afterlife royal style. They were just placed inside the chamber without mummification, a wooden case, nor a granite sarcophagus. Now, I think someone tried to sugar plum their answers to escape the blame, right? So this one answer might explain why they didn't find any bodies within the chambers. Many of the burial chambers found were flooded by rising water table. So it could be that the bodies were just washed away. Could you believe it? And to top it off, before the Moreau Dam, they found ring rocks inside one of the pyramids. Think of it like tapping on musical glasses, so when tapped, it creates a melodic sound. Allow this video to demonstrate. So, 
there you have it. Now you know what I've been talking about. In the next video, I'll be taking a look at a fascinating rock cut structure that has stood the test of time in a bull cymbel. That's all for now.